Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on the India amps up rescue and relief work after cyclone batters its west coast. Pakistan cannot accept everything IMF says, finance minister tells global lender. And Sri Lanka's economy shrinks 11.5% as financial crisis continues. And now for all the details. Roofs were blown off houses and trees and electric poles uprooted as strong winds and torrential rains caused widespread destruction along India's western coast on Friday in the aftermath of cyclone Bipajoy's landfall. At least two people reportedly died in Gujarat state after being swept away by flood waters just before the cyclone made landfall on Thursday evening. More than 180,000 people had been evacuated in India and neighbouring Pakistan in the last few days. Weather officials said that the cyclone weakened after hitting land with a wind speed of 85 to 115 kilometres per hour. वो जाने हमने खोई हैं लैंडफॉल से पहले जो दुखद समाचार है लेकिन इतनी तैयारी का असर ये रहा कि लैंडफॉल के बाद में कोई जानहानि नहीं हुई है कुछ 24 पशुओं की जाने हमने जरूर खोई हैं और 23 लोग घायल हुए हैं लेकिन कोई लॉस ऑफ लाइफ लैंडफॉल के बाद नहीं हुआ है कोई हजार के आसपास गांव में बिजली सप्लाई डिस्टर्ब हुई है उसमें से ऑलमोस्ट 40 परसेंट गांव कच्च जिले के हैं कोई 800 पेड़ों को नुकसान हुआ है Authorities in neighbouring Pakistan said that the country was largely spared and there was no major impact due to the cyclone. The system was likely to weaken into a depression by Friday evening, while heavy rain was expected in some areas until Saturday. Five Pakistani terrorists were neutralised on Friday in an encounter with Indian security forces in Jammu and Kashmir's Kupwara district. Kashmir Zone Police and the Indian Army confirmed the development on Twitter. A search operation was still underway in the area till the last reports came in. The latest encounter was part of a series of counter-infiltration operations in the region. India blames Pakistan aids terrorists infiltrate across the border. Since February, there have been at least 10 major infiltration attempts. The UN General Assembly has adopted resolution to establish a new memorial wall for fallen peacekeepers. The resolution piloted by India was submitted by 18 countries, including its neighbours Pakistan, Bangladesh, China and Nepal. India's ambassador to the UN, Ruchira Kamboj, introducing the resolution, said that the memorial wall will be a testimony to the importance that the UN bestows on peacekeeping and will also serve as a constant reminder of the cost of UN decisions. India is the largest contributor to the UN peacekeeping force and has currently close to 7,000 of its troops deployed in different UN missions. About 177 Indian peacekeepers have also died while on duty, the highest number by far from any troop contributing country. The establishment of the memorial wall at a prominent location at UN headquarters is therefore of the utmost importance for all of us. It will be a testimony to the importance that we as the United Nations bestow on peacekeeping and on our peacekeepers. It will be a source of solace for the near and dear ones of the brave hearts who made the supreme sacrifice, including their serving comrades and colleagues. It will remind us of not only the sacrifices of the fallen, it will also be a constant reminder of the cost of our decisions. Hours after the IMF expressed dissatisfaction over Pakistan's federal budget, Finance Minister Ishak Dar hit out at the global lender and said they cannot accept everything that the IMF demands. Dar addressing a parliamentary committee meeting said Pakistan is a sovereign country and should have the right to give some tax concessions. Raising concern over the delay in disbursements of funds from IMF, he said foreign hostile elements want Pakistan to turn into Sri Lanka before IMF negotiates with Islamabad. 
The global lender in a major blow had called the federal budget a missed opportunity. Crisis hit Pakistan has barely enough currency reserves to cover one month's imports. It hopes to get $1.1 billion loan from IMF, but the bailout has remained stalled since November over a number of conditions. Former government employees in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently staged a demonstration to demand the promised hike in their pensions by the Pakistan government. They accused Islamabad of being apathetic towards their plight. Scores of former government employees and pensioners in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently held a protest to demand a raise in their pensions from the Pakistan government. The protesters lamented it has become difficult to manage household expenses amid soaring inflation. But Islamabad has remained apathetic towards their plight. They said they have been holding demonstrations since last year, but no official has come forward to even hear their pleas. The protesters blamed instead of providing any aid to the people in the backward region, economic losses faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are also being compensated from territories under its illegal control. The UNICEF representative in Afghanistan, Fran Iqwiza, has said that nearly 16 million children in Afghanistan need urgent humanitarian aid and has warned of a children's crisis. He said that many children have become responsible way before their age of maturity and the condition of children in the country is disastrous as some of them are breadwinners for their families. Meanwhile, the international community of the Red Cross in its report said that the number of unemployed people in Afghanistan has significantly increased in the last two years. It states, in addition to the humanitarian crisis, unemployment has damaged the lives of millions of Afghans and people with disabilities are among the most affected. Since the Taliban takeover in 2021, unemployment has skyrocketed and poverty across many parts of the country has put millions of people at risk. Sri Lanka's Census and Statistics Department said in a statement on Thursday that the island nation's economy shrank 11.5% in the first three months of 2023 as the country remained in the grip of its worst financial crisis in decades. It said the downturn was driven by high inflation and high interest rates as well as restrictions on imports and lower earnings from apparel exports. Sri Lanka Central Bank projects that GDP will shrink by 2% this year. The country's economy had contracted by a record 7.8% last year after its foreign exchange reserves hit record rows. The island nation started to see signs of an economic recovery after it secured a 2.9 billion IMF bailout in March. But it still needs to complete debt restructuring talks by September in time for the first IMF review. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.